Hi, welcome everybody to the InfoPath Migration webinar. This is me. I'm doing the webinar today, Shay O'Connor. I'm head of solutions at Flowforma. That photograph was actually taken in 2020, and our time machine brought it back. So uh, I'm a lot younger than that. The uh, and there are my contact details. Um, the agenda for today, as I say, it's uh, very. It's going to be a, a quite a, sh a short and sharp webinar. We're going to have a quick look at why you would be sort of migrating from uh, InfoPath and what you should look at when migrating from InfoPath and, in, and migrating your processes. We'll have a very quick Flowforma overview and I'm not going to go into any deep demo on that because we will see Flowforma in action when we then go to part three and start looking at the InfoPath migration tool demo. At the end of all that, it's questions and answers. So, it's, as I say, it's going to be fairly uh, short and sweet. So, starting off in the, the approach for when you are looking at your InfoPath migration. First of all, it's the question is going to be asked: Why would you why would you migrate from InfoPath? Now, as the majority of you will know. Uh, InfoPath is no longer going to be supported or has an, an end date from Microsoft's point of view. So there really is no, there's going to be no efforts put into InfoPath going forward. They won't be supporting it from 2000 and I think 20 or 23. Um, but the reality is if you have InfoPath um, processes, you won't be able to really enhance them to bring them uh, up to date. Um, there are limitations, as we all know, with InfoPath, especially with um, as products and so on evolve, and InfoPath hasn't been evolving. You do need to code. So if you want to uh, do pretty much anything with InfoPath, you have to have some level of coding experience with InfoPath. You you don't have an offline capability. These are all just sort of standard things from an InfoPath point of view. And uh, in reality, InfoPath was never designed for SharePoint. It was actually retrofitted after it was designed. So newer products, obviously for the likes of Flowforma, which were built to sit on SharePoint from the get-go, would, would have a considerable advantage because we uh, would automatically utilize all the benefits and functionality from a SharePoint point of view. So the question is then, with your info path as well, with all your processes and all your forms, can you adapt? So what I mean by that is, if you do want to, uh, at this stage, say, change some of your forms and move forward, can you do it? You are going to need to involve a programmer. You are going to have to have experience from an info path point of view. You are going to be thinking then, you're going to have to plan it, there's going to be a speed of turnaround, so which uh, other uh, platforms will be a lot faster in this regard. If you need any level of mobility, so if you want it on your phones, if you want to move around with it, you don't really have that option because you can't put it into an app form. So. It, it was a great product, and it, I'm sure that if people are using it on day to day, we'll see that it, it's fairly core, can be core to their business. But the reality is, it's okay at the minute. But you will need to start looking at where you go um, moving forward uh, to, from a migration point of view. So, what approach would we advise? Now, uh, this uh, sort of approach is not just an InfoPath approach, but it's also for Lotus Notes or any sort of process tool that is, is there from a legacy point of view. Is there a best before date on your processes? So you, you need to start actually analyzing uh, the process straight away. So instead of just diving into moving on to a different platform, part of the, of the project will have to be analysis of what you have. So when was the last time you actually had a look at your processes? When were they signed off? Was it two years ago, three years ago, a year ago? Has anybody actually checked, are those processes working correctly? They may have improved productivity. They may have improved efficiency. But are they optimized? Now, the only way of optimizing uh, your process, well, one of the main ways is by analyzing data. So do you have any feedback from your data to help you visualize 
where there are bottlenecks, are there problems in your processes, in your steps, in your process. So uh, you really need to look at having a tool that will allow you to do that and hopefully will allow you to do that without any effort from your side. When you start looking at your process then as well, you, uh, we have this phrase that only the strong will survive and what I mean by that is you may have a number of processes there but are they all required? So is your migration from InfoPath as big as you think? Does the 80-20 rule apply to this? So are you going to look at your process and say, I've got 20 processes here or I've got 50 processes here, but actually what do we use on a day-to-day -day basis? They are the processes that you need to concentrate on initially. They will require migration and maybe the other process might just phase out or you might want to create them from scratch again because they haven't been looked at in such a long, long time. So it, it may not be as daunting as you think, the migration, and, and I just mean that from a quantity point of view, so the number of processes that you're going to bring over. So then, obviously, when you've sort of looked at your processes and you've analyzed what, do I, what am I going to bring over um, and uh, what am I going to reject, then what's going to be your new era? What's going to be the new uh, platform that you're going to look at? And the big thing is you're now going to be in a lovely position that you can look at all this brand shiny, brand spanking shiny new platforms that are out there. And obviously from our, our point of view, Flowforma, we go, we, our focus would be giving you control. So making you self-sufficient. And that's what really what you need going forward. You don't want to have to look for pro programmers who have to code and so on. You need people who understand the process. Now, you can have your SharePoint developers and, and any of your developers who've been involved in process before would actually have gained a lot of experience in that as well. But the reality is, once you know the process, you should be in a position to design and create that process. That being said, you're going to have a big turnaround then because your, the speed of turnaround will accelerate due to the fact that you don't have to call in programmers. You don't have to schedule changes. You can actually sit down and let the analyst create or uh, view your process and go through the step-by-step -step and the questions and the rules and so on without having to have anything coded. From a flow formal point of view, in this case, we are lucky that we can sort of uh, jump over the coding area and we've gone straight into a no code scenario. For those of you who are not familiar with, with flow formal, and I, I won't, for those that are, because I know there are plenty on the webinar who have a, a good knowledge of flow formal, I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview of it before we get stuck into the, into the tool. Basically, your business processes, as you know, you have many of them are all fed into our the Flowforma engine. Now that engine comprises of a forms, an automatic forms building engine, business rules engine, questions engine, which is basically your fields, and document services all rolled into one. So you have your workflow, you have your rules, you have your forms all in the one area under one level of control. And you the, the nice thing is your forms are created automatically. So all you have to know are your steps, what you want, what questions you want to ask in your steps, and what rules do you want to apply. It's fully integrated with Office 365 and SharePoint, and that's online and on-premise. We also uh, have an SDK kit from an integrations point of view, so you can integrate with different databases and you don't have to worry about falling out of the upgrade path. And from all of that information that you're gathering, we have an Atom feed that will feed, it's an XML feed that will uh, you can link up to any of your BI tools from Excel all the way up, Power BI, Cognos, whatever you like. We have customers that use nearly everyone. Just some simple highlights. It is a process enablement tool. As Gartner told us uh, last year, we uh, have now got to the stage where we are enabling uh, users to create their own process so the business analysts can create their own. To no code, the only coding you would ever need would be integration and that's a once off. So when you're creating your processes, when you're doing any of your calculations within the process, when you're doing any of the movement, any of the rules, there's no code. It is all logic. It's fully integrated, as I said, with SharePoint and with Office 365. We estimate the creation 
speeds up to 10 times faster than using sort of regular, uh, if you're using SharePoint workflow or example InfoPath. Any of the consultants that we've dealt with have literally turned around. We thought it was six times, is that they reckon 10 times faster. Um, it's written in HTML5, which means that it's device independent, so it can go on your phone through the app, it can uh, and your tablets, etc., not just on your PCs. Um, so, and as I was saying earlier on, you got forms, workflow, and DocGen all in the one place. Big highlight from us, from our point of view, is means that it's all together. You don't have to buy any separate entities. It is all in the one place. And another nice thing, and this is for your process improvements, it has inbuilt process performance monitoring. So as you run your process, your steps and the flows and your times are analyzed, and uh, we have a full monitoring system to show you. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up my... InfoPath tool, the migration tool, I just want to show you here. Very simple, very straightforward. What you do from a starting point of view, now just to remember before I, I get stuck into this, it, it doesn't transfer your code. So in other words, if you have business logic that's in your InfoPath um, flows, it doesn't bring over the code, okay? So it's what we're going to be doing is bringing over the framework, bringing over your steps in your sections, bringing over your fields. Um, it's not a database, so it doesn't react the same way as InfoPath, but the nice thing is you don't have to code any of this. All you have to do is create your, your questions, etc., and they will reside in the SQL database in the background and can be reported on through the Atom feed. Um, you can do very simple things, changing titles and so on, but I'll show you that now in a second. So if I'm just going to select uh, an InfoPath uh, template, so I have an annual appraisal here that I'm just going to open. Now it brings in, obviously, the top level, that's my process, but then it brings in every section. As you can see, I just open them up here. And within every section, it brings in all of the fields. Now these are going to be converted into what we call questions. And the reason we call them questions is you can put logic behind them. You can actually uh, put in rules behind them. So they are questions that you're asking as things from fields. I'm just going to open up each one of these. Now, you can decide at this stage, we prefer to do your designing, obviously, in flow forma, but you can decide to bring in steps once at a, uh, one at a time. You could decide that a step is not used anymore and just bring in at different stages. So you can bring in steps, as you can see over here. If I'm not happy with that, I can just reset, and I could decide to just bring in everything. So I just select from the top level, and I can add everything. Now, what it's done over here is you can see you've got so plain text. It brings it over to what we call a single line of text. You've got persons or groups. It still brings over persons or groups. Now, with drop downs, from our point of view, they are choice fields. Now, we will not be bringing over the data that's behind that. So if you have a drop down list, We'll know that it was a drop-down list, but you still have to bring in your own um, data to back that up. So that would probably be through either SharePoint lists or uh, some level of integration. I'm just going to save this flow. And I'll just save it here. So just call it annualappraisal.xml. Okay. Now, what I do now is I'm going to pop into Flow format. Okay. So what I want to do with that flow is a simple utility that we have and it's for importing and exporting flows. Now this can be used for flow format flows as well as um, InfoPath forms but it, basically what it's doing is importing XML files usually in the flow format format. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick that annual appraisal and just open that and go next. Now, just some of these uh, step codes are already in the system. That's fine. And I'll just overwrite those as well. 
No, it's just checking for email templates because in a Flowforma um, process, we could have templates, so email templates, and in this case as well, document templates associated with a process which would be linked to that XML. Are there any users? No, because we're not bringing that information over from InfoPath. All we're, what we're doing is we're bringing over the whole framework, we're bringing over the steps, we're bringing over the questions, etc. So this will just take a couple of moments um, to load up and convert into a full flow form of format. Now, again, this from uh, from Uh, sorry guys okay sorry about that yeah that's better I brought in the previous version okay Okay, so as I was saying, the framework's going to come in. Apologies for that. I just brought in a, um, an older version. Uh, we're now on 4.1 instead of 4.0, so there's a few actually extra pieces that are required for this. Um, so it takes just a slight bit longer to import. And here's my annual appraisal that's in Flow Designer already. Okay. So as you can see, it's brought in the process and the steps. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any editing on it so far. I just want to show you what has been brought in automatically. So if I just create a new form, and what I'm going to do is select Annual Appraisal and press Continue. So as you can see, automatically what we've brought in, the form is automatically created and the steps are automatically here. Now we don't have any of the rules, we don't have any of the sort of required fields, etc. Uh, but we do have, as you can see here, enter username, so it's brought in the correct formats for uh, our fields. And I can, if I keep submitting, and again, I don't have any required fields here, um, it can go through each step, etc. And it's brought in, for example, the date and time and so on. But what I'll do is I'm just going to pop back, because I've just brought in that framework, I'm going to go back to the flow and I'm going to just make some rudimentary changes to it that from an info path point of view would have been quite uh, slow to do or could be drawn out. So for example, I'm just going to change the name of the process straight away. So I'm just going to put in a space there. I'm going to put it into the HR group. Uh, I'm going to make myself the administrator and I'm just going to give this a, a prefix so that every time it's run uh, it I now know that AA-1-2 is a, a performance appraisal. I pop into the first step here and for example I've got employee and that on the right hand side you'll see is a person or group. Now I'm just going to pop in here and edit that uh, question. So I've got it says employee, that's great, it's a person or group, super. I can put some information here for a tooltip point of view. But as you can see here, the facilities here, I can I can bring that down to, it has to be from a SharePoint group, or I could allow it to have all users. But I'm just, in this case, I'm gonna default it to the current user. So it's gonna pick up my ID from that. Now, we've got position, line manager, and they say country we have here, and a country was brought in as a single line of text, but I'm just gonna pop in here and edit that. So if I go in here, I may want, now it's saying operating country in the question code. I can change all this. So I can have that it's uh, operating country, or we just say op country. Uh, and I can, instead of having an underline, I can say operating country. Uh, I can put in a, please select from drop down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this a choice field. So now, again, I can decide to have it as a lookup that I can link to a, a list that we would have. But in this case, we could have just uh, put in a choice field and say uh, Ireland, England. So 
So any of your lists here, do the drop down. I could I could select a default value, which will actually pick from that list I've just input. But I won't put a default. I'll just save that. So that's quite simple rudimentary changes. I'm just going to save that and close. And I'll pop back in. I'm going to create a new form. So it's now moved. I put that into the HR area and annual appraisal. Press continue. So here automatically my uh, user ID has come in. So it knows it's me. Uh, operating country, there's my tooltip. Please select from drop down. And here's my list. Now, as I was saying to you earlier on, we don't bring any over any of the rules. We don't bring any over any of the code. And uh, the reason for that is that it's a lot easier to do it in flow format. So if I, I'm just going to put in a very simple rule here to annual appraisal. At the moment, what we don't bring out, we bring over every step, but they may not all have been in full view for the for the actual process. So I'm actually going to make that second step, the appraisal mid-year review. I'm going to make that hidden. So that's automatically hidden now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say put in here under put a rule under country. And I'm going to add a new rule. And in this case, these rules here allow me to manage the movement through the process, what happens, what data integrations I'm going to do, what permissions, etc. But for this one, I'm just going to, it's a simple hide show step rule. Now, it's important, the rules all work off the same logic, and it is basically logic, it is not code. If I go into the conditions here, the same conditions apply to any of the rules you want to apply. So be it integrations, be it uh, calling of communications, emails, generating documents, it is all based upon the logic. So if I say here that if the country equals, I could also have not equals is blank, etc., etc. but say that equals uh, Ireland. And I, I could add more. There could be more criteria if I want, but I'll just leave it as simple. If the operating country equals Ireland, I'm going to hide show a step. So we have performance appraisal, but the second one, I'm going to show that step. So I'm going to save that and save that and close. So if I go back in, the nice thing is because this is all centralized, all your users, no matter where they are, the next time they go into the process, all these rules have been applied. So you don't have to worry about rollouts. It has been rolled out. I go in here, and at the moment, you can see there's now only three steps, number one, three, and four. However, if I change this to Ireland, number two pops in. So your screens, your questions, etc., can become dynamic solely based on simple logic, not on code. i just close that. Now, I just wanted to give a few minutes for if there are any questions. And um, so I just check. That's just a very um, simple sort of overview of the tool. What it will do, as I say, and I'll just to reiterate, what it's going to do is bring over your full framework. It's going to bring over the process, the steps, the questions, and you can then start attaching the logic, start attaching the lists, etc., and your rules to it. But as you can see by that, literally in a couple of minutes, you can you can have your rules put in. It's very straightforward, especially if you already have an info path uh, process to start off with. You're going to know your rules. You're going to know the movement of it. But at least now you know that you can make changes that really, really quickly. Um, from this, I know this is very quick. So if anybody would like to have a look at um, what they, what would be required for to migrate their info path forms, etc., just give us a call. Uh, give us an email and we will happily have a look at it and then give you advice on it and it's it's a free assessment that we will give and also from that you can have a one-to-one -one demo you may want to ask some more technical questions and we can have some of our technical consultants involved in it just to help out if there are more detailed questions you want to you want to get into and uh, one of the things that we do like 
to do here is offer you a proof of concept. So that's off our bat. We put in a couple of days. If you have a, a process you want to migrate, we can put in a couple of days to it, put it up and running on an environment online that you can assess and you can test out and you can have it for a few weeks and see how you get on. So we would fully encourage you to give us a, a call and we're only too happy, happy to help out. So are there any questions? Which directions are available? Okay, uh, Matthias is asking uh, which language versions are available. Now, there's, there's two ways of, of, of cracking that, Matthias. Basically, because you can rename or you can name all of your titles uh, within your questions or your fields, you can have your home language. So it's, it's not uh, multilingual at the moment, even though that is in our roadmap. Um, we are hoping to go multilingual this year. But failing that, if you wish to have um, processes with your own language, so with your home language, could be German, could be uh, French, could be Spanish, etc. You can actually build the process with that language. Now, the flow designer itself will still remain uh, in English. However, the, uh, the resulting process will be in your home language. So all the titles, all the questions that you're going to be asking can be in your home language. Do drop downs, Graham Potter has a question for us. Do drop downs and lookups come across as the same or as plain text field and need something uh, setting up again in flow format? Yeah, the drop downs will come over um, as plain text as a single field because uh, we don't link to the data. So you will have to bring over that data separately. Yeah, you're dead right. Um, we haven't brought over any, so we haven't been able to, as you can imagine, that data could be coming from any source. So we, we just bring over the field and you will have to set up that data source again, uh, be it uh, manually input or uh, importing a list to so SharePoint, etc. I hope that answers your question, Graham. And I don't think there are any more questions. Okay, so just to remind you guys that um, if you please fill in the feedback because we would like to donate five euros on your behalf to the Irish Cancer Society. So it's a great cause and um, the simple feedback would help us immensely uh, for this webinar and for webinars going forward. Again, thank you very much for attending, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out um, and hopefully talk to you again.